Hello and welcome to CS264 Software Design. This is the third and final part of lecture 16 on our introduction to software design patterns. In this particular uh, session, we're going to be revisiting our undo, redo using command and memento. Um, in fact, we're just going to be focusing on memento because I had done command previously. And I had also given you an example in the last lecture and um, part two of lecture 16 where i showed you how to save and restore states using the memento software design pattern and using the simple enumeration called state that's available for you as a demo for download and for working yourself so now i have a a, a second one which is um called my ui demo which actually doesn't have much of a ui at all but um i may modify at some point to implement a ui and add some had some commands in there, but this is the application here. So this particular demo, it's a little bit longer than the previous one, um, and it uses the memento pattern to save and restore canvas states. Okay, and these are canvas states that contain shapes. And um, so we're going to store um, and restore, store and restore canvas states. So we have to set up a canvas and shape classes. So the shapes then can be added to and removed from a canvas. So therefore changing the state of the canvas object. Okay. So in this example, canvas will be the originator class that we'd seen earlier. The memento will be snapshots of the canvas object. And the caretaker does the same job as before. It stores and restores the canvas state using memento objects. So a little while back, I gave a, a demo to you. Um, and um, which was a nice UI based demo. So I've, the reason this is called my UI demo, I guess, is because I've taken the shape and the circle classes from that demo. So it had a simple menu driven interface that just added circles to a canvas and outputted the state of the canvas. The axis modifiers on the classes have changed here, even though I've copied and pasted some of the, the information from here. And um, the axis modifiers have changed because I've moved the classes from inside the program class in the previous example, um, to outside of the program class. Okay, so there's separate classes. And remember, the access modifiers are used to modify or specify the scope of accessibility of a member of a class or type or the class itself. So we could call the canvas state, but we retain the name canvas for readability. Okay, so if you want to compare it with the last example we did here, where we were dealing with, where we were working with um, uh, state we will actually be looking at um, we'll be looking at uh, what's this one? Oh, this is the command one sorry no it's not that one <laughs> it's not that one it's been my memento here um you know we could have called it state but we're not going to do that in this particular example okay um to make it clear we could use interfaces so that we can see the functionality of using interfaces as well so i thought that would be nice so this section then just contains the classes that are used by application to create the canvas and shapes, et cetera. And I move the classes around to keep the memento pattern classes closer to each other. So it's a bit slightly different. So these have been inserted a little bit in front of the, of the design pattern. So not too different really. We have a, an abstract class called shape and it has an ID and you know really that's all it does. And it, um, it means that we concrete classes Concrete shape classes need to implement this two SVG elements, so we have to implement this method. So we have a public class circle here, which is a concrete class, and it extends the shape class. And we have a, a center coordinate um, for x and y, and we have the radius, and we have a constructor here that the default constructor, you know, if you just call it, just sets a circle, um, a circle called C100, and you know everything's 100, or we can just specify a new circle with this constructor here where we have parameters and we have a method that converts it to a string for writing purposes. It over or overwrites the string method. And we have one that has an, uh, a conversion to an SVG element as required by the um, abstract class shape here. Okay, we could have actually, you know, we could do things with interfaces if we wanted. There's, you know, we could have a long discussion about whether interfaces and abstract classes can contain members and all that kind of stuff, but um, we, we won't do that just here. We've done it in class. Okay, so that's that's everything we really need to worry about with shapes. And now we have our canvas. And so we have a canvas class here, 
And this is going to be a little bit different because this is a, you know, this canvas um, has a, a list of shapes that it maintains. So we know what shapes are on the canvas. Again, it has a constructor. That doesn't do much, but we have a constructor, which is interesting. Okay, so here's a, a constructor called canvas that creates a canvas from another canvas. And we're going to need that a little bit later, okay, because that's useful. So what's happening in this is that it creates, it iterates over the shapes that are in the canvas and it adds those shapes to this particular shape. This is like a copy, really. It's like it's a deep copy. Okay. The problem is that if we just said shape, um, if we just said that uh, something here, like if, if I had something that just said here, like this, public canvas, canvas, Okay, if I just did this, okay, what would happen? It would be a shallow copy. It would just copy a reference to this. So would, we wouldn't actually have a new canvas. Okay, so and if this original, if this original one changed, then this canvas copy. Oh, sorry, that should be canvas. Autocorrects. Okay, so we have this constructor that creates a canvas from the canvas past. What well, is it? It's a shallow copy. Okay, really, and what happens is that it's really passing and saving the reference. So if this canvas, as the parameter changed, then this one would change. So we don't want to do that. We want to actually have a nice deep copy. So that's why I do it this way. We can add a circle to the canvas, and we can display the canvas, which is as before, and we can delete a shape with ID. So we, you know, these are the methods. I just left them here because you know I want you to see that, of course, that you know. Just because we have um, we have added methods that allow us to be able to do something with the state, and um, we don't want to we don't want to um, throw away any of the other things that this particular originator does. Okay. Okay. Or the canvas object does. Okay. That's good. So what's important really is that we have this this deep copy here. Now we're into the Memento design pattern implementation. So here we have the Memento class. And so for this one here then, again, it's the same message as before. We're looking at now having an iMemento class this time. Okay. And um, this is nice. Okay. So we have an iMemento and it gets the state and sets the state. And we can go to our example. It doesn't tell us here we have to have iMemento. Okay. But we can do it that way. So it's a slight change here. But that's okay. We can do this. We saw that when we were looking at commands and I command, okay, interfaces for commands. So that's good. So we get state and set the state. And now we're telling us how the momentum should behave. We want to have something just beyond having the having the um, the constructors, okay. But we could take this out if we wanted, you know, and that would be fine too. Okay? So this memento has a state and it's a canvas state, and we're saving the state, and we're getting the state. And again, we're we're um, we're setting the state. So these are these are should be should be fairly straightforward. Now we have our originator class, and this originator class is quite short because it just sets um, uh, here. But we have an interface for the originator because we can. Okay, just because we can, and it's always nice to do the separation. So now we're, it's about behavior. You know, we might have different originators. You know, so here we have our base class, and um, I originator, and we have a concrete class originator coming from here. So we save the state of the canvas. That's the job of the originator. And you know, it sets the state, gets the state, and now it creates a, a memento and sets a, and sets a memento. And here we have this, you know, return a deep copy of a canvas state here. Well, we create this new copy here. And that was explained from earlier. You know, and that was really important. If you don't do this, the program won't work properly. Okay. Now we have our caretaker class, and again, I'm just going again with the interfaces, you know, caretakers, because we may have more than one, you know, but all caretakers should be able to do something with mementos here, okay? So it adds a moment, it adds a state, and uh, gets a state, and our caretaker then maintains this list of memento list. It's much the same as before. So instead of the list of the enumerations we had, um, in terms of the states, we're looking at mementos. Um, here because we, we call it mementos, and then um, they're all slightly different. So we store the state here. Um, we can get the state, and we have something that the history, so we can actually iterate over the full state of the canvas. Because, as I mentioned, you know, I liked the, um, I liked, uh, I like this. You know, I like the fact that we can see what the various 
current the history is, and we can then go to a point in history and not just pop off the last piece. Okay, you know, it's we could we can always pop off the last one if we want or index it. So now we have our client class, and that's the application. And again, it can have many originators, caretakers. Okay, so this is similar to before. I've just adding. I have a I have an um, an app that just sorry a method here. Remember function here encapsulating this, which allows functionality that allows us to add a circle to a canvas. I'll just give it a canvas to add a circle to. And um, you know, I think about this and I think mm, I don't like this. Really, I probably should have something, you know, I probably should have a method that allows me to be able to add something to the canvas in the canvas object itself and call it rather than having something here, okay? Not good design, but I'll leave it. I don't want to change things too much. So we add a circle, and this is really bad, you know, because it's adding a circle to the canvas. It's also writing out this message that tells us, you know, we've just added a circle to the canvas, you know, and it, then it does some other stuff as well, you know, and so it's doing too many things. So, you know, our solid rules, this completely breaks all those solid rules, but I wanted to keep it similar to what we had previously. Okay, so the main program starts here. Okay, so our, our static main, and it only works with circles. You'd have to modify it to work with other shapes, but it should, should be fairly straightforward. So we start with a blank canvas, okay? And um, so here's our canvas, which is a new canvas. We have an originator and a caretaker. Now we could put the canvas inside the originator, but I just kept it like the other program. This is a bad program. Okay, so I have some tests then here that I've done to make sure that the deep copy of the canvas works before adding it to the Memento class. And, and so I did some work to make sure about the, looking at the original state of the canvas, displaying the canvas, and then I was adding a few things to the canvas to make sure that they worked, and ran, you know, and then I was making sure it was fine. I was creating circles and creating mementos and doing all this kind of stuff. I just wanted to make sure that when I created copies and mementos um, that it all worked fine. I could create something from, a, I could create a, a circle on a canvas, add it to a canvas, create a new canvas from an old canvas, and then update the original canvas and make sure that the second one didn't know. You know, all that kind of stuff, you know, which there's a lot of test things here. So this is all the test. And it's important to have that. And I tend to, for demos, I tend to have all of these tests here and just comment them out, okay, so I can go back. And then so I know bits and pieces work in my program, I can go back and start uncommenting parts. Like say if I write these parts down here, I want to see do these work. Well, these are these are my base tests. Once these work, I know everything else should work. Okay, so if I make a change and suddenly something stops working, I'm able to comment them out and go back here and then do this work. And it's a nice way to when I'm developing programs just to, to make that work for you. Okay, so I'm starting off. So I have originator studying the current state of the canvas. It's moved around. I'm adding and creating a memento to the caretaker. This is as before. And then this extra bit here where I'm just showing the history. So that's the first part. I'm adding a circle and I'm saving the state. And I'm showing the history. Adding a circle, saving the state, showing the history. Now I'm adding two circles and I'm saving the state and looking at history. Now I want to revert to an earlier state. So I'm showing the history just first, then I'm reverting, and I'm looking at the final state, and I'm I'm reverting this state here, the first state. Okay, so it'll be the first save. Now, one of the things I'm saying here is that you'll see this when we run. If you play with this program, I'm not entirely happy with the fact that the canvas could be out of sync with the originator. Some work needs to be done to correct this, I guess, you know. So, um, but this was just about creating canvas objects, I guess, and it depends how you set up the originator. But really, so we need to do this. But I was cobbling the earlier code into some demo solution. So it's not a good working design. It's a working design, not a good working design, but I just wanted to look similar to the earlier example. And I wanted you to see that, you know, you might have a working and then you try to introduce a design pattern and you start to shoehorn in this kind of design and it doesn't always work neatly or nicely. There will be some side effects perhaps. We probably would be better just redesigning everything, okay? Happy if the canvas object was hidden inside the originator and the newly created shapes, created shapes are passed to the originator much nicer, much neater, obeys our solid rules, all that kind of stuff. But as I said, you know, I want to show you how these things get messy, you know, and then, um, yeah, we can get this working program. It isn't too, too, too good, but there's side effects, and you should think a little bit about that. Okay, anyway, we can fix this by setting the canvas object to the original state at any time, which is what I would do. So the canvas that we have here is the original state. It's, that's why it's there. And we can save it again, just to be sure. 
Okay, <laughs> and show the history. So there's a lot of output for this program, but it should work fine. Um, and you'll need to probably, so the way to do this, okay, is look at the code, understand what's happening, um, understand why we're here, okay, and then um, understand here, what we're, what's going on here, and then have a look at the code, and that should be should be fine from there. And then, you know, understand the tests. You might want to undo all these tests just to check. Yeah, do some testing here. Maybe uncomment these and have a look. Maybe uncomment these and then comment out this section here, from here downwards. And then revert, comment this back out again like we have here. And we start at this point as our program here. And we can create a terminal and we can run the terminal. So this time we're in this my UI demo. So let's go in here. Okay, and let's um, clear. Let's move up a little bit. Let's move that up here. And let's move up here. And start running. Okay, so I'm showing the history. You know, you can see that there's currently one history, and we would have expected this because we've got the original state of the canvas, we've added the state, and the state of the, the canvas is nodding on the canvas, so that looks like it's okay. So now we add a circle and we save the state. Okay, so we've added a circle and we save the state, so we've got two states and we can see the history, and we can see the canvas has changed here. Okay, that circle is there, and we can check this is the circle we created, this is the circle we saved. So yeah, that's good. Okay, so we add another circle to the to it. And then we've got three history points here. And we see the blank canvas, canvas with one circle, canvas with two circles. I think the next time I added two circles. Yeah, I added two random circles. So we add this and show the history. And you'll see state zero, state one, state two, state three, and you'll see there are four circles here, which is what we expect. Okay. Now we're going to revert to an earlier state. Okay, so we want to see history revert and look at the final state and then do that okay so that's fine so the final state now is this because we reverted to this state here which is state one we saw this we wanted to hear one okay and if we look at the history and we go back and we see state one was this one where we had just had circle c49 on the on the, the canvas and we reverted final state now is we're back to this one here. So we've gone to that point again. Yeah. So that looks like it's okay. Let's have a look at the final state canvas. So the final state of the canvas is, you can see, is here. Okay. So I'm very happy with this. Okay. So it seems to work just fine for me. Um, and we now see how we can implement the Memento software design pattern um, to store shapes on a canvas and move back and forth to a, a new state. Okay. Um, this is going to be useful for assignment four, um, and you can work with this. Um, I'll put it online for you on Moodle, and you can download and use it. Again, originators, mementos, caretakers. If we were to generate using the POML, um, we'd be able to see something. Um, to we'll be able to see how it all puts together and we can generate that. I'm not going to do it now, it'll just make it a little bit longer, but you know, you can actually generate um, the command pattern. You can actually, you can generate C sharp to PUML. You can get that um, yourself and it should be fine here. And then we could see all of these classes so we can see, um, God, it's doing everything here. So, um, and we can generate all of this stuff here. Have a look at all of the various examples here, and we could probably run and preview this. Um, I guess if we wanted, we could look at this the preview current diagram. A bit of work going on here because quite a lot it's doing all the programs that were in this thing here, so you can see the various approaches here. So here's our program, it's got a command, it's got a shape command, add shapes to canvas shapes, circles, so that's all that group are all together, okay, and the user's using all this, and then you should be able to see the memento, the memento, the originator, the caretaker, we can see all of these working together, and we can see how our, our, um, 
application then will do all this work for us. Okay. And um, yeah, so it's not too bad. So it does look like it should in a way. Um, but again, you have to do this kind of stuff as well for your for your assignment, and that will be very useful. Um, and I hope that this has given you some insight into how you might look at using software design patterns, behavioral software design patterns, command, and more importantly, in this lecture, memento, in order to be able to undo, redo in your applications. Thank you very much for watching.